Breaking tonight, Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen holds an emergency phone call saying we need to treat the border crisis like a, quote, Category 5 hurricane. That's what she says this is. More agents right now making their way towards our southern border as I speak, all to help with this surge of migrants heading north to our country. As border apprehensions start to break 100,000, imagine that, 100,000 per month. Joining me right now, Counselor to the President, Kellyanne Conway. So great to see you again, Kellyanne. Good to have you back on the show. Thank you, Trish. All right. You guys say this is a crisis. Tell me why it is. There's no question. And we even have uh, President Obama's former Homeland Security, Jay Johnson, referring it to as a crisis. We've heard ICE agents who are completely non-political have worked as uh, career folks, not political appointees, saying they've never seen a crisis like this. And whether you use the terminology or not, you can't deny the numbers. We are seeing historic trends, 76,000 migrants presenting themselves at the border, over 100,000 apprehensions last month, 4,000 in one day alone. And we can be on track for a million in a year if you keep pace with that. But apart from that, just think of what Customs and Border Patrol is doing, what they're asking for. They're asking for me more resources, more personnel, better physical security at the border. And the president has said that he would consider shutting down the ports of entry because we just can't sustain the influx. The Secretary of Homeland Security, Kirsten Nielsen, last night had the call at the cabin. I was on that call, and she is uh, analogizing it to a Cat 5 hurricane to get people's attention because some natural disasters, some crises present themselves almost immediately. Others present themselves over time. And that's what we have now because the executive branch has been acting on this crisis since day one of President Trump's administration. But it's time for the other two branches of government, the judiciary and the Congress, to step in and do their job. So what is the fix? Let's get Congress to fix a couple of loopholes. The TVPRA, which basically is a magnet for young kids to come here um, and then be recycled, be as like a conveyor belt of kids, bring them back again and again because a, an adult can come through with a child that way. That's mm -hmm. a fix Congress can do. The other fix is for the Flores decision. Flores means that we have to treat adults and children differently after 20 days. We can't keep them together. We'd like to keep them together. We'd like to return the minors to their home countries safely and securely. So Congress can act. They can get together and do this in a matter of hours, and we hope they do. But until they do act, this president and this administration is going to continue to shine a light and get more resources at the border. The drugs themselves would justify the president's action. Those drugs are coming into all of our communities. Many of them are coming through the southern border, not just through the ports of entry, but between the ports of entry. Customs and Border Patrol says that nearly 400 pounds of fentanyl was interdicted outside of the ports of entry in FY18. That's enough to kill every man, woman, and child in this country. Listen, I, I, the reason I say, you know, why is it a crisis is because I think in some ways the administration, uh, at least as far as the left is concerned, has lost this argument. They're out there saying, no, no crisis. This whole thing is made up. Um, but there's a humanitarian aspect to this that I think a lot yes, of is. people are, are missing. Um, walk us through that because yes. you know, there are a lot of kids, there are a lot of women yes. uh, that are really in some ways being sacrificed as a result of, you know, some lousy planning, frankly, uh, on behalf of us. Well, I also think they're being lied to by these coyotes, certainly, who take mm. their life savings and promise them a peaceful rite of passage, a journey northward. Uh, and that, tur that trek is dangerous. And you, there is no guarantee at the end of the trek. And so we don't want them to be lied to. Also, the president has been very clear that he'll cut off funding to Northern Triangle countries um, if they don't start helping us to inform their to citizenry. That. Because that he, he has Also, women that. are sexually assaulted and the kids, the kids are used. And by the way, one thing mm -hmm. I've been arguing for, let's start showing what happens to those kids who are released into the interior of the U.S. The idea, Trish, that all these kids who are released into the interior because the law compels us to do so just go into the Disney World or the playground of the U.S. is folly. Some of them are sex trafficked. Some of them die on the journey. Some of them, yes, are, are joined with family members or sponsors, but that's not true of all of them. And you know that if you really care about kids at the border, you wouldn't just let them come in here yeah. and you wouldn't let them have that dangerous trek where there's DHS says they're making 70 medical calls And by the way, they'll say you know you're being inhumane <laughs> for saying such a thing. But I no, hear they're you. Being, they're and being, they're, being, they're being blind and also cushy. Let me ask yeah, they're, you this. They're, so the president not, keeps saying he's going to shut the border. If, if we don't have the adequate resources to police this, then he is willing, he says, to shut it down. You know 
I know, everyone knows, he knows that comes with serious economic consequences. Is he really and truly willing to do that, Kellyanne? The president himself yesterday said, Trish, that he's more interested in safety and security than trade right now. Okay. And he believes that uh, the safety and security of the American people, our sovereignty, is a better argument than the rising cost of avocados. Uh, at the same time, which I see more and more people mentioning as an unintended consequence of shutting down the border. Mm -hmm. I get it, everybody. I get it. But let's talk about the more serious issue here of the drugs pouring over the border, the sex trafficking, the MS-13 gangs. And then, of course, just as you say, it's not just a security crisis. It is a humanitarian crisis. Fortunately, more of the mainstream media outlets in print and on TV are playing the footage and showing people a fuller story, Trish, of what exactly happens when you present at the border, when you're trying to come under holes in the fencing, for example. It's, these are not good conditions. We want people to come here legally. Be one of the 33 million immigrants who have come here legally. We're the most generous nation in the world to immigrants, and we will continue to be. Listen, um, and, and you know what? And, and I just want to get one thing out of the way. Consequence, but we're trying to mitigate that. There's an opportunity here. There's an opportunity for this president to really yes. engage in meaningful immigration reform and bring the right people here, people yes, who want to work, who want to wanna be Americans. And that's an opportunity. I frankly, Kellyanne, I think we the have the jobs available by in that. the Trump economy. <laughs> um, we, have the, we have the jobs available in the Trump economy. Look, we it, need to fill it, those jobs. So people need to come here legally and safely. Yeah. This is not a safe journey. Let me get to some other news of the day. Joe Biden obviously uh, making some headlines here uh, from some... Uh, situations uh, in some cases months ago or months ago or years ago what do you make of the joe biden news well, this is a party I see they're talking about where do we draw the line. It's just his physical way. I have two words for them, Brett Kavanaugh. That man's nomination was derailed, and he, they wanted to destroy him as an individual, his family, his reputation, his career, anything they can get their hands on to prevent him from taking the United States Supreme Court seat to, to being confirmed by the Senate. And if you go back and you play tape, and all you had all those other people saying, but that's not the Brett I know, just as they're saying, that's not the Joe Biden I know. That's not the, gee, I mean, there was no evidence. There was a woman's testimony from 34 years earlier, and, and, and none of that was ever proven. Brett Kavanaugh, fortunately, the good guys won, but not before so much reputational damage was trying to be inflicted, destroy him, destroy his reputation. Uh, the other thing is that Joe Biden, at his age, he's somebody who was affectionate, I guess, in hugging and maybe kissing and sniffing people's hair, which is weird, um, uh, for years, long before the Me Too movement said you practically can't you know, shake a woman's hand without, without asking her permission first. I warned everybody during the campaign after the Access Hollywood tape, and I said, you're making a big mistake putting, you look really nice in that dress on the same spectrum as rape, and everything else is included and called sexual assault. That's a big mistake, but they made it. They went all in to try to win an election that they lost, uh, without collusion, by the way, and and they and the other, they went all in after that to try to destroy a Supreme Court nominee. There's a big difference between what Harvey Weinstein has done, bringing women into isolate, allegedly into isolated places where they can't defend themselves, and, and maybe offer Offering them jobs or making them feel like they so need to comply with his. So it kind of sounds like you're defending Joe Biden. Predatory. It sounds like no, you know, I'm not you know, defending maybe you don't like the, the, the moves, nope. but. Huh? No, no, no. I'm the one who came out on Sunday on your network and said, if you type in creepy Joe videos, you come up with a treasure trove. So I'll say it again. And people have done it mm -hmm. since. No, I'm not defending him. What I'm saying is that in this in 2019, people are being judged for conduct that they that they did years ago mm -hmm. by these standards. It's the Democratic Party that has pushed it so far. And it's Democratic opponents of his like Elizabeth. So it's Ford, coming back to Biden. Like Amy Klobuchar have said. Yeah. You've got to explain. Um, also, I just I just marvel that the two the two people who are polling the best in the Democratic primary right now in most states and nationwide are Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. It's the it's the old white male career politicians. Not exactly what the Democrats had planned for their for their 2020 race. Mm -hmm. um, and Joe Biden, I think this is the worst non rollout rollout of a campaign. First, <laughs> Stacey Abrams basically said thanks, but no thanks being your VP. I if I run, Stacey Abrams says, I'm going to go for the whole thing. Thanks, but no thanks. Mm -hmm. She rebuffed his advances, so to speak. And then and then Joe Biden uh, has just all these people coming forward saying, you know, that is a pattern of conduct, and it's it's kind of weird. Uh, Nancy well, Pelosi it seems like I guess they kind of want to take them down. 
Um, so I'm not defending, I, but I am bemused that people sure. who went whole hog are now saying, where is the line? Where do we stop? Isn't there a difference when it's somebody of their own party who they think can beat, uh, they can beat Donald Trump for president even though he can't? Really quick, we just got this news crossing right now, just breaking. Uh, the Democrats, uh, boy, they, they just don't want to give uh, this president a break. They're now uh, asking for six years of President Trump's tax returns from the IRS. Are they going to get it? Well, they're harming the country. Uh, this is not oversight. This is overreach. And because they can't indict and impeach him, they want to embarrass and harass him and those around him. And America sees it for what it is. The Mueller investigation will have been seen as the definitive, deliberative, full, fair, thorough investigation not just into collusion, but into all the different chutes and ladders where it eventually went. So anything now in the Congress will be seen uh, through a partisan lens by many Americans. They will say, I'm sorry, we spent $30 million and 22 months investigating every, everything. Uh, and now only one person can actually request this over, over a very long-standing law. And his name is Richard Neal, because he's the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee. And I, I would say to you that he, he had a good meetings with Secretary Mnuchin about infrastructure. He told CNN in March that he had talked to the president about infrastructure. And all of a sudden, I guess the pressure is on him to request these tax returns. Uh, but there's, this is because the Democrats put everything, they put all their eggs in the collusion, impeachment, indictment basket. And they were promising things, these chairmen of these committee, powerful committees, on TV more than they are in the hearings on the, on, on the committees that they yeah, represent, that, was a mistake, that they chair, sure. Trish, and they didn't come up with that. So this is new breaking news, but I will tell you that people have been wanting to do this for a long time, <laughs> but I, I look at it right now as harassment. Kellyanne, so good to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to Thank you, Trish. Take care. Homeland Security Secretary Christian Nielsen heading to the border today and comparing the crisis to a natural disaster. Nielsen making it clear all options are on the table to deal with the situation, including the use of military resources. Uh, that we're now treating this like a massive Cat 5 hurricane disaster. Why wouldn't we put the U.S. military along our border if it's really a crisis of that magnitude? I think we're looking into that. We've made the request. Uh, I'm in constant contact with the acting secretary of defense. Uh, I talked to some of the combatant commanders today. We are, in fact, pushing more and more military resources to the border. Ari Fleischer is a former White House press secretary, also a Fox News contributor. Ari, always great to have you on the program. If you could sort of step back Thank and you. look at this border situation for us and where things are today, Christian Nielsen making the case that this is a Cat 5 hurricane disaster situation yeah. at the border. And she's right, and that's the problem. For decades, the federal government has known we've had problems, and for decades, the federal government has failed to do anything about it. And now President Trump is stuck with this. And the heart of the problem, of course, is that if you bring children to the United States and you apply for asylum, you know you can get away with it. So our system's incentivizing this. Look, Senator, here's another way to look at it. Pretend that planes were landing at JFK, Newark, Chicago, LAX every single day, and instead of the people coming from foreign countries going through customs or immigration, they simply got off their planes and blended into our communities. That's what's happening on the southern border every day. The president seems to be doubling down on his threat to shut down our border. Um, he, he tweeted this out. Congress must get together and immediately eliminate the loopholes at the border. If no action, border or large sections of border will close. This is a national emergency. Obviously, Democrats pounced on that. But even uh, members of the president's own party, uh, Mitch McConnell, saying this could be a horrible thing for our economy. Don't do it. Uh, Larry Kudlow's responded to that, by the way, uh, his chief economic advisor uh, to the president. He's basically saying that they would look to keep some of those truck lanes, freight lanes open to minimize the impact on the economy. But would that be a good move for this president or is that just simply a negotiating tactic? Well, it's a tough move, and sometimes you have to take tough moves to make people get off their positions. Look, if it, could, it would create economic pain on the Mexican side of the border and on the American side of the border. And on the Mexican side, the question is, would it create such economic pain that they start to put pressure on their government to stop people from getting into their country, transversing it to get into America? On the American side, would it put pressure on people to say, finally, federal government, do something about this? I just see no evidence that there's a mood to compromise in Washington, and that's the magic word. 
The Democrats have got to support law enforcement, border enforcement. Republicans have got to welcome immigrants legally to this country. That's called comprehensive immigration reform, and it needs to be done. Meanwhile, let's take a look at what's happening with uh, some Democrats in the House. The president and his take on Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and her impact in Congress. Watch. I'm actually saying it's a wonderful thing. The Green New Deal, done by a young bartender, 29 years old. You have senators that are professionals, that you guys know, that have been there for a long time. White hair, everything perfect. And they're standing behind her and they're shaking, they're petrified of her. We support the Green New Deal. So he's, he's mocking the Green New Deal, but he's also mocking yeah. Democrats standing behind her, as he suggests, shaking, uh, petrified over her presence there. Well, she does give you a lot to work with, doesn't she? <laughs> I mean, when she comes to this town as a avowed socialist and wants to change Washington to fit her, I mean, it's pretty shocking to change America to fit her. Um, look, I, I call it the bad new deal. I, I, I think that's the right way to approach this thing, or the green bad deal. Uh, there is nothing meritorious about what she's proposing. It is so anathema to the American traditions and what we need to have an economy hum and run, while probably squelching the technology we need to solve gr global warming and issues like that. So she does give you an awful lot to work with. She's kind of fun. I, I enjoy watching her, and uh, I hope she stays in Congress a long time. As you said that, she was up on a stage and uh, embracing somebody there. She's got a lot of energy, uh, at the very least. And, and the president says he looks forward to running against the Green New Deal, so he hopes it sticks around. Ari Fleischer, great to see you. Thank you.